Hey, 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 it's Shop Talk, baby. This is the show where it's okay to be you. We're talking from Yale to jail and from the church house to the penthouse. Nothing's excluded on Shop Talk. So if you don't have a phone, I suggest you borrow one. Call in and voice your opinion live every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Yeah, that's right, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Don't forget to Shop Talk with your girl, because right here, oh, we can see real. Good morning, good morning, good morning. That was Earth Earth Crisis by Steel Pulse. Man, you can't go wrong with that. That is everything. Nick got something for the people, y'all. I mean, she she came in. She came in swinging this morning. (laughs) What is up? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Came in swinging. Happy New Year, y'all. Hey, yes, we definitely did that. Look, last week, it was the next day. Yes, first uh-huh. show of the new year. We stepping out was happening. That was just so appropriate. That, that's my jam, though. They should just take me to a whole nother level. <laughs> Walk into the club and you hear stepping out. You be like, oh, I'm stepping out. Clear the path, people. Clear the path. All right, look at that. Go ahead, <laughs> you ain't got your backdrop. No, I couldn't find 
Friday. That's all right. No, I'm talking about your uh, car seat with the seat belt. Oh, car, yeah. <laughs> Not today. It's quiet today. All right, all right, all right. We ain't mad at it. I wasn't mad at it before. They probably like, who's that? That must be a new person. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a new background. Just a new background. Okay. I just got to stay in the house today. Okay, okay. Um, you know what? We got so much to talk about, so we're going to cover some um hot topics, and then we're going to get into a little girl chat if y'all down for it. Oh, of course, always. <laughs> Amber D gave the thumbs up for the listening audience. And you no, know, she's like, ah, this is it. So listen, we got to give it up uh, to Kevin McCarthy. He, he, he's definitely a no quitter. And I, I said that the right way. A no quitter. <laughs> a league of his own. Clearly, you know what I mean? After 14 fails, the 15th time. So if y'all don't get nothing out of that, Please get right. never give up. <laughs> Y'all gonna look. Please get that. Never oh, give Lord. up, people. Never ever give up because um, yeah, he didn't at he all. He sure didn't. Look, and he got it. I think mean, that's that. That's like that might as well ring. I was gonna say. I think they just did it just because they knew he wasn't gonna stop. So they just said, "Forget it. Let's just go ahead and just vote this man." <laughs> <laughs> just go on, let them just go go ahead. That's what I'm saying. That, it just it, that's why I feel like it's like that might as well ring. Mm-hmm. It's like I done been she held me down for about 19, 20 years. I might as well marry her. Instead of it being just like like I still want to keep my options open. So we gonna right. rock for about five to ten years in case, just in case I find somebody better. But since you don't rock with me for about 15 to 20, I might as well. So mm-hmm. we bought yeah, look, be the change your mind as well ring to the Kevin McCarthy. For those who don't know, he's uh the house speaker. Uh, what is it? House speakership? That's what he was going running for. Man, they was like, Man, this cat just is not giving up. Just go ahead. Just go. Yeah, he, he wasn't. He was gonna lock them up until they <laughs> just <laughs> go on. Man. Go on. Or, or, or who did he persuade? And this is just my thoughts. <laughs> Listen, that is the typical, if you don't succeed at first, try, try again. And keep and again. trying. And again. And keep and trying. Again. And then take a break. We're going to go on a 30 minute lunch and come back and keep trying. <laughs> he was not giving up. I ain't mad at him though. No. You want something bad enough, that's what you got to do. Man, listen. Pop, pop, if he a grandpa... Pop Pop never gave up. That's going to be his legacy. Exactly. <laughs> so, take it for what it is, lovely people. Take it for what it is. I ain't mad at him. Do your thing. Um, it's sad that it had to keep getting to that. It was like, right. oh my gosh. So, you rather, you rather have somebody else, but they're just doing whatever it is they're doing. Right. What are we going to do, people? What are we going to do? Uh-huh. We got a lot to talk about, so stay right here. Let's get this show rolling. Gotta know it. Everything that happened is motivation. Better know it. (laughs) Better know it. What y'all do for New Year's? Anything good? We had a hooker party. A who? A hooker party? A hooker party. You know the TikTok challenge that... Wait, wait, wait. What kind of party? It was a color party. Oh, a color party. Oh, that's fine. Yep. So I... Of course, it was purple, so I had to go out after the show last week and get snacks and drinks that were purple. And then I, you know, had a purple uh, shirt, went and found a purple t-shirt, 
because I don't know where my other purple t-shirt is, so I had to get a new one. So uh, my brother, they were blue. So everybody, you know, all of my cousins, their household, everybody had a had their color and brought snacks. For we those who... All- I bet you did. For those who aren't familiar with the color party or who have a TikTok, because y'all know they're banning it, so that's one of our hot topics, so great segue. Um, <laughs> who does not have a TikTok account, they have like a um, a color party, and the people are assigned certain colors, and you bring whatever that color is. I think it's kind of cool when people go all out. I really do. Especially for like birthday parties, and you go out and you just bring that color. However... Coma, there I go. <laughs> you had those people. I, remember, I seen somebody who had white. I thought it was really cool because she brought hers in a clothes basket. You can use a clothes basket. Mm-hmm. Somebody had orange. They had flaming hot Cheetos. A whole bunch of stuff that I was like, mm, I might not do a color party, or you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But I think it's the concept is good. I bet you it was fun. It was bright. It had to be bright. Yeah. Yes, and and just a good time yeah. overall. So you guys just like check it out. Google Color Party. See how it is. It's really wonderful when you have a small group of people, though. Yeah. I got to say, it's it's good. Amber, have you ever done a color party or seen one? No, I never even heard of it. So it's all good to me. Oh, my gosh. We had a ball. Of course, we had, you know, snacks and everything, like other food, finger foods and stuff like that. Uh, listen, we did karaoke. We played at the end of the night. You know, black folks got to play them spades. And- I know that's right. Joker, Joker, Deuce, or straight spades. Yeah. Joker, Joker, Deuce. See? And listen, it was a lot of a talk, a mess talking, especially with my two cousins, two brothers. Yeah, I played with their wives, and yeah, we was kicking their butt at first, but they won. So they like, yeah, we don't never lose game. So I'm talking smack, like sit y'all butts down. Y'all talking all this smack. Come on, let's go. They would not sit back down. I was like, I'm ready now. Challenge. They, they was not having it. They now, just ready to go. Now, see, with the whole Joker, Joker, Deuce thing, that's like the next generation. No, let's play Let's play cards. Joker, Joker, Ace, King, Queen. I want to do it the original way. There that's was a. How we always played it, though. Joker, and then they'd be like, see, Joker, 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 Deuce. They're like, oh, now you got to throw in another wild card. Uno, stop. I want to ask you, lovely ladies, with Uno, draw four, draw four, or pick draw four, pick up your draw four, and then put down another draw four. Do you stack or not? Stack. Okay. What about you, Nick? Like if somebody throw out a draw two, can you throw out another draw two, or do you, they have to pick up the draw two and then throw down another draw two? Or you? No. If somebody else, if you throw a draw two down and they got one, they can throw it down. Keep going. All right, the consensus is in. It's the stack game. Like we got to go. If you got to pick up twenty four cards, go on and pick them up. And don't be crying. Right. If you gonna play, if you want to sit down and play, you want to play cards. Let's play cards. All right, let's have a good time. We did a, a color party for my son's birthday. Oh, okay. And it was cool because I had him choose his favorite colors. So when he chose his favorite colors, we pulled from that. And then we just bought him something singular that color. (laughs) Something that color, okay? Black, okay. Black tie. White, white shirt. (laughs) Yeah, no. We just. Okay. It was um, a lot less expensive. And then we did it at, you know, in the bag match. But I think it's just quite creative. Just something fun to keep the energy going for what we're dealing with in the world. Right. So I'm glad that you had a great new year. What about you, Amber D? Uh, we just went to church. It was a church dinner and then, you know, worship service. And that was it. Okay, I'm gonna need you to be a little more enthusiastic about church. <laughs> <laughs> you hear her? Yeah, we just went to church. Yeah, it was a great service. It was it was good. You know, good stuff. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, and, and y'all stay in. How long y'all stay in after midnight or? Oh, just like thirty minutes. It was from nine to twelve, so it was already a long service. I mean, that was like the dinner plus the service. Oh, <laughs> it was a yeah. At twelve thirty, we were done. I'm so. like, was it a concert? 
Like no, no, nine no. to twelve, three hours. Look at yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I feel like two hours is a normal amount of time for a service. Uh, then plus, you know, an hour for dinner. So I was like, oh, it's normal. So y'all had a di- y'all have a dinner at the church. Now I might have to come visit. They feed yeah, folks. Cool. Okay. I think I thought a lot of churches do it. No, they down, and I was raised in church. Oh, no, we our usually always. Our, ours, yeah. you know what? I don't even know if it's enough staff to even for the whole congregation to even well, serve. It's, um, a lot of it, I think, is funding. Like you, um, churches apply for like grants and stuff, and then partnerships with like businesses. Um, and that's it's a lot of surplus. It's not just funded from the congregation or funded from ties. But, and then it's like a lot of volunteers. You know, okay. members that are willing to cook and yeah, that's and, a woo, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people to cook yeah. for. The um, we used to pray pray the New Year in. So during like right. that eleven fifty five all the way up, we would yeah. pray until you know New Year came in. But we never got out. Then the choir was saying we didn't get out at twelve because of the shooting. You know, some people would shoot at midnight. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing worse to walk out. The, look, girl, walk out the church building, be laid on the sidewalk. But I'm like, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Way before midnight, and just you pow, pow. I was like, dang, this is a, a nice neighborhood. They get your shooting too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on need for you to do it the right way. They need an in service on how you're gonna do it. If you're gonna do it, if you're gonna act up. Right. Exactly. But that, yeah, my church, we did the same thing. We have service for, you know, a couple hours. And then um, 11.55, we start praying the new year in. And after midnight, everybody say happy new year, give their hugs. Then we go down there and we eat. Then we leave. Then y'all leave. Bye. See ya. Uh-huh. After you finish eating, time to come. Yeah, okay. No, we ate first. So, <laughs> so what did you do? The Like, does your church do the traditional thing? Or, yeah, I'm starting stuff. <laughs> or was it just a regular dinner? It was a, it was traditional. It wasn't so, there was, they served sauerkraut. No, sauerkraut. the jerk. They went there, um, Nick. The superstition. And sausage. And but there was no black eyed peas. Um, and it's like a multicultural church. Um, oh, that's cool. Before. I'm not really a, me- I'm not a member, but, um, I don't know if I told you that my of my the church that I did become a member of my pastor passed away and I and I drifted away, so I was like oh, I really want to. I was invited to the church and I usually spend New Year's at in church, and so we at this church we um it was like uh, doing anointings into the New Year. So okay. she went through and it's led by a lady and she um she went and anointed everyone with oil. After her sermon, and that brought in the new year. Now that's nice. Was that the anointing that we got that one event we went to, Amber D? Which one was that? Remember, I was all wet. Remember, I was all greasy. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Oh, I remember. That was so good. That it was it so really good. was good. It was very traditional. Oh. It was so just like a little, oh, little sauce. Listen, she she did. She uh, put, I don't I don't know if I needed a double dip. I don't know. Right. Okay. I was just like, I mean, it was real. I mean, uh, she was a powerful. She speaker. was a powerful speaker. I cannot take that from her. The, oh, yeah. let me, okay. Right. Let me catch you up. No, <laughs> she was. She was a power. Oh yeah! <laughs> if y'all can, if y'all can see Amber D, oh my God, you'll be screaming. She, it was listen, like I was getting the facial. <laughs> so everybody, everybody had that cross. Like I had a cross too, though. But let me tell you. When she came, I should have known though because when she came, she was like, don't worry, I ain't gonna mess up your hair. Well, I wasn't tripping about my hair at all. That was like, I wasn't even thinking about, matter of fact, I think she brought my attention back to my hair. So, because you remember she said she was like, I'm not gonna mess up nobody's hair. Then she came to me. So she put the cross on, but I don't know if her hands was leaking with oil because baby, I was wiping my eyes my sh- no, no, the, no, the oil no. got all on my shirt. 
What happened? She wasn't doing, she might have done the cross. No, okay, so I think what she did, she did the cross, and then she did a whole swipe. <laughs> across the whole forehead. Okay, and then some people who she said, I know you, you know, I know you're going through something. I know you're in the battle right now in the spiritual warfare. And it was the, the forehead and the people. <laughs> she was like, I'm going to fight you. Because then the the one the, the gentleman who got um promoted to pastorhood, I mean she poured a whole bottle on his head. Like, you, you poured the whole bottle on him. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, if he's about to be a shepherd of God's people, then yeah, he probably needs that whole bottle poured on him. So, but I still loved, I loved it. I loved yeah, it. It, it, was, it, was, it was it was it was great. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> all right, everybody's just walking out just just greasy. Go crazy! I'm like I don't moisturize. Look. <laughs> it was, but you, we weren't in church though. We like, we weren't cool. in church. Yeah. we were at a luncheon. Exactly. It, it was an it, it was an amazing event. I gotta say that I can't even remember her name, but I'm, let me tell you, she was she was extremely powerful. But yeah. that's what I couldn't figure out. So that's that's what happened with I, because I was like, listen, yeah, baby, I'm glad I had some waterproof <laughs> mascara. I was gonna say, good thing you didn't have no makeup on. I just had mascara, my regular, like I do, my lip lip gloss. Yeah, but um, you didn't have full face makeup on, honey. Yes. <laughs> It was, <laughs> it was, it was just dripping down. It was, and I, I can't even remember. I don't even remember what shirt I had on, but I do remember it dripping on my shirt because my shirt was um a satin shirt. So yeah, it was a, it was a satin shirt. I wasn't tripping because she was so powerful with that, but I do remember looking down and I was like, this ain't gonna look good in a minute because it was wet, you know, a satin wet summer day, and it was a light color. So, oh my goodness! I was still order. I said, "Well, my cup run of over." Anybody want some? <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> that is so funny. But so that's what you guys do. You got anointed through into the, the new, new year. year. Okay. Well, no, actually, it was up until and then right before the new year. Then they sang a worship song. So, but um, it was like. I forgot because you know there's different styles of gospel music, but mm-hmm. it was kind. It was I want to say it was like folk. But it was kind of music you're supposed to dance to. Did she say did, Nick? Did she, did she say folk? You don't say, well, no. Uh, what is folk music, Amber? No, like folk gospel music, like uh, like band. That I know because I, like, I see in my head folk music. Being that I went to predominantly uh, <laughs> white school. Um, I got I got the dancing in my mind. I got a visual, but it's uh-huh. they got gospel folk. Now, see, now I got to look up gospel folk because I need I got the plan next week. So to introduce the people, <laughs> let me introduce the peoples to the gospel folk music. That might not, I mean, that might not be the right word, but I'm just thinking of like I know I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's the kind of music. Serious, it's serious radio. Like the Sirius XM, the gospel channels. So I, yeah, I know what you're talking so about. So gospel country, exactly. gospel There's folk. Like, you know, exactly. So what would be gospel R&B? Oh, that would be like, oh, I can't even think of his name. Kirk Franklin uh, channel. It, it, Kirk Franklin it, would be gospel <laughs> hip hop. Exactly. <laughs> and so gospel R&B would be like Melvin's uh, The Sap. The, 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 Melvin's The Sap. <laughs> Sorry, my dog is attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to be in the frame so bad. Ah! <laughs> but yeah, I'll call that like gospel Mar- Mar- that. Mar- yeah, Like Mar- Okay, I- I'm trying to get an understanding. I guess that would Tasha Cobb. Would that be like some? Hmm. What, what's the, what's the girl name to have all the children that could sing? Kiki oh, Kiki, Kiki Y. Kiki Y. Oh, the, listen, Kiki Y got a new booty. So. And no. Nick talked yeah. about it last week. It's a video out where she is actually twerking to gospel music. What did you realize? What song that was, Nick? Uh, uh-uh, uh. But yeah, 
there's another video of a lady twerking in church. Well, I think I think Kiki Wyatt was. I think I don't know if she was going on stage or what, but mm-hmm. uh, who? What was? Uh, was it Kim? No, that wasn't Woman Thou Art Loose. Her. What's her name? Uh, no, that's um, that's that's T D Jakes. Woman Thou Art Loose. T D Jakes. Yeah. Um, the uh the black lady, the one um I don't want to put her dirt out there. The alleged rumors of her. But uh, Juanita Bynum, um, 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 Yolanda Adams. Uh, uh-uh. uh, Juanita Bynum. She right. was talking oh, okay. about how women dress and when they come. Oh, okay. And let me tell you, you know, you dress how you dress. But I gotta be honest. When I saw, and this is just my views. When I saw yeah. Kiki Wyatt, and she had, you know, she was twerking with this fitted dress on in the church. I don't know if she was in the church. I'm just. I'm just saying what I'm saying, but if you watch the video, you can't tell, but I could hear like the music playing. It sounded like a choir and she was at on the side door and, you know, she had her cleavage out and, you know, she's busty, but she had this fitted dress with like a corset. Was it a corset, Nick? It looked like a corset or a vest, some type of vest or something. And, you know, so her stuff was sitting, sitting pretty, but I was like lightweight in agreement with Juanita Bynum. Because I see it like certain in my mind, there's certain things that you do and I, and it might be your upbringing. Yeah. Come as you are. But here's the thing. Come as you are. You prepare for that. That was a preparation. Yes, it was. That was, I'm about to wear, I'm about to kill him when I walk in this church with the game, my best, you know what I'm saying? Is how's my butt looking? It was very disturbing to me. As a female, you know, as her sister, like I would be if 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 I was her sister or her, you know, her home girl, I'd be like, please don't do that. Like you about to go into, you know, the sanctuary. Like don't do that. You know what I mean? Be be in the back, right. be you know, be in the overflow because you don't want to distract somebody. So what's your purpose here? You know that type thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah that 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 dress was not church appropriate whatsoever. Oh, but you, you gotta see it. That's how a lot of these folks dress nowadays. They don't believe in your your hoochie mama clothes and your good church clothes. I, I listen. I always had to <laughs> church clothes when you go to church. Like that, just that's a given. And 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 guess what? If you couldn't afford certain church clothes, that's a difference. And you could tell. But that was a preparation. So that's why, you know, they, they kind of taking this whole come as you are thing up to like a bit too far. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it's too much. Like Walmart come as you are clearly. They, they doing that with their pajamas. But when you, you lay your outfit out, you prepare to wear your outfit out and you can't distinguish between club clothes and church clothes. Like Nick was saying, yeah. That's something that you prepared that outfit. Listen, that outfit was prepared. Yeah, that, you laid it out. That, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. First day it of school outfit. First day of high school. First first day of ninth grade outfit. You know, you be looking at it all all week like this one wearing this. You know, right? Like laying your stuff out. Like okay, my damn wear this. Today I'm wearing this. <laughs> You know, for the week, because it's first week of school. You got to show out the first week of school. Right. You, that, you don't care. You got to come out swagging. Yeah, exactly. And that's how I'm going to have this. And they going to have that. And they going to have the new day. They gonna, so I got to come out like this. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's, and that's how I feel like with these, like. with some of these outfits that you, you okay with walking in church. Go ahead, Amber D. What you got? I think it's better to wear, like, if with the whole come as you are thing, I feel like what happens, I feel like this is really common with like Christians and non-believers is people associate Christianity and Christians as with like, or going to church as with looking good. So there these, I would imagine that these uh, women that come dressed like that, they're prioritizing looking good at church over being modest because you can be modest in your plain clothes. Like even if you come in your pajamas, um, you know, in your Walmart attire and your bonnet, that is more modest than coming intentionally with your face beat and your cleavage and your butt hanging out. And so I'm sure she thinks <clears throat> better than someone dressed in Walmart level clothes to go to church 
but the person wearing their t- a baggy t-shirt and no bra and the fuzzy pants and a bonnet is the factual, literal reality is that person is more covered and more modestly dressed than the person who put all this time and energy into their appearance exuding this very intentional sexual energy and i feel like if you're gonna come as you are i would prefer you come in your walmart gear than you to come in your stripper club nightclub gear now you brought up a point with the stripper that that's the that's the direction we go and how do we fix that how do we make it i think prioritizing when you come come to church as you are but it's more important to be modest than to look good. Okay. That also That's falls on the church, though. Huh? That also falls on the church. Some you of that think? falls on the church. I agree. Mm-hmm. They gotta, you got, I feel like the church. You, can, they, you, gotta old, get, old, and, you gotta get, you gotta, and that's, as, I think, as a Christian, that's something else we're called to do is to call it a. a if you know someone is a Christian and you're not doing something right, it is your obvious like, hey, you know you're wrong or you know you ain't supposed to be doing that. Um, and they can get offended if they want to, but if it's the truth, it's the truth. Listen, them old school church mothers and ushers did not play that. And you, y'all know that. They did not play that. They escorted you out, baby. Go the get a skirt. <laughs> yeah. the old the school. Talk over y'all. play that. You need some of that back in the church. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, see, that's where the come as you are comes in to me. Be- uh-huh. Not like revealing, but if somebody has. All right. Let me be transparent. I'm going to be transparent. If you guys want in on this conversation, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 619-902-2287. 619-902-2287. And you can also send a text and we'll read it aloud. Um, here's the thing. I went to a church. I was pregnant. So I go to this church and I had like some, they were like stretch pants. They were stretchy pants. They weren't biker pants. And I had a long top. It definitely covered my butt. What a lady came, but what she didn't do, she didn't say, Hey, you got to have a skirt coming up in here. She handed me a bag of skirts. So she thought, like, and y'all know, I, you know, I'm extra. I put a tin on, and I, I felt like when she had me to, it was a black bag, black garbage bag too. The white ones wasn't out, so I'm dating myself, okay? So I'm looking like, what is this? It was a bag of skirts. Now to me, I felt like she just hit me over the head with a bag of skirts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, what well, she just hit me over the head with a bag of skirts? Like what? But I couldn't fit anything, so that was my issue. Now, and I was going, this was afternoon service, and now, hindsight 2020, looking back, instead of her saying, ma'am, you can't, but I was, and I wanted to be seated in the back as well, and I had my tennis shoes on at the time, too, so she sat me in the back, which was cool, because that's where I wanted to be, but she didn't say anything, she was offering me skirts, probably thinking I didn't have any. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. that, you know, like I said, how's I told you? I was younger then, so I was I was 25. Now, you know, 25 male. I'm like, I don't need no bag of skirts. You see this outfit? Like, what? I could buy me a skirt if I want to wear. But I wasn't for no month, right? <laughs> you see this belly? It ain't going to fit. Right, right. And that was the issue. Now, regarding, like when you said, like going in your pajamas, you want to... The, okay, dress down. So that was my thing with the whole dress down. I, I wasn't for it, but there was a reason for me dressing down. And dressing down has become so comfortable that people is dressing like they at the club and stripping and all that extra stuff. It's like, mm. now when you said, Amber D, about like your face being beat, you want to dress up for the Lord. Oh, I completely agree. You know, and I would think that you would put effort into which, you know, what you wear now? I'm being transparent. Judge me if you will. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get y'all go ahead and judge me. It was a church that I would not join or go to because I just could not see myself wearing no skirt with no tennis shoes and socks. Like <laughs> that wasn't what I was on, and I was like, "Oh, no, I'm not joining that church." They said, "Well, why won't you?" I mean, great speaker. They said, "Why won't you join?" I was like, "I don't want to wear that." 
And I was so focused on how they dressed. So it prevented me from joining that church. I needed to go somewhere where I was comfortable at. So you had some people was like, well, that's not what it's about. Oh, but it is because that's what's important to me. You look good. You feel good. You go on in. Boom. I just can't see myself wearing no long skirt with no socks some sweat socks. Because <laughs> remember the slouch socks? I'm taking, about, taking you back. And some tennis shoes. Like that just wasn't the look for me. And I'm all I'm going to rock with my car makes. Okay. Well, we can't have no lip gloss like boom. I might have my little rose like you couldn't wear makeup either, which that wasn't a big deal for me with the whole makeup thing. But I might want to wear some lip gloss and you can't judge me out in the street. And it was being judged. So that's where I'm coming to. And it was like, OK, so you preventing people from joining the body of Christ because you are judging. And that's when you get to the older folks, the ones like, oh, yeah, give me that gum. Give me, give me that gum. I went to a place off of Wilson Avenue. You make a left at that first one, to, first street, and I ain't gonna say nothing else. <laughs> Look, and I ain't gonna say nothing else. You couldn't have gum. Yeah, she grossed at you. Yeah, you couldn't be. You couldn't. Look, we're the same people, Amber D. It's the same people. Not the same person I was speaking, but at that place, it was the same. Oh, okay. And. Okay. You couldn't have gum. And I understood that because I guess they didn't want their stuff messed up or people putting gum up under. I mean, I don't know. But come as you are and dressing down was cool. What I taught my children, you could dress down, but it still had to be modest. But on the first Sunday, you still suited. You get dressed. Mm-hmm. On the, I said, we, we can't. I, I can't go so far to the left that we forget. You know what I mean? And it's like. You got to have some order. If you don't have no order, laws are for the unlawful. And see, these people coming out here and she was like to work. That's the unlawful. We need some laws back in there. Church mothers, where, where the church mothers at? They well, need a, like they, she needed Sister Betty there. I feel like, you know, it was... it. Um, church mother at the house, she don't want to get COVID. She's, <laughs> she's still at home. Okay. Right. They've been shamed and whatever. And like you were talking about, like the gum... And food and stuff. As far as I know, the churches I've been to, like you're definitely allowed to have food and gum and stuff in church. You're not allowed to have food and gum in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, right? In the sanctuary, you're not, and you're not, and if you know in the Bible, you're not supposed to do that. And I feel like, yeah, it's just basic. Like, you know, people will mess stuff up. You know, that's just human nature. Um, but as far as the church I visited or that I've been going to lately. Uh, I had went there a couple years ago, actually, and it was the vibe of the church was definitely come as you are. I felt like there was a very large population of people with like mental illness okay. in that church. And so it was definitely a come as you are. And I feel like that made me uncomfortable at that time. Okay. And then on top of it, the, the pastor was a woman that made me uncomfortable at that time. And I, and I felt like she had just really started in her ministry. And because of my upbringing, I knew when someone was new to the pulpit, I, you can tell. And it doesn't mean they're a bad speaker. It just means they're just starting out. And so yeah. I'm like, nah, I'm good. So I kept looking, right? And so I ended up circling back because it's uh, real convenient for me, it's location. And she had improved dramatically in her speaking. And my perspective had changed which was that, and someone else told me this, was that, well, you know, at that church, and nobody, ain't nobody got room to judge you. <laughs> anything, anything. You can go in, the, you can truly go in that church as you are because can't nobody say nothing. And I was like, because I also felt like that at my old church and other churches I visited where I felt like I have to come correct you know suited and booted because i'm gonna be judged because look at how everybody else is dressed and everybody else got their you know their little perfect lives and that's what they're presenting to other members whereas this church is like the complete opposite like a low-key like the bible study low-key has like aa meeting vibes to it you know where it's really about like confession and like working on your struggles and like praying for people and people openly discussing their past and their past sins and the things that they're still struggling with okay. and, you know, coming to that under the Lord. 
So it was just like totally different. But on the flip side, I feel like I've always loved church hats, but I always felt like I'm too young to wear a church hat or people would look at me as odd. as like an odd duckling for wearing church hats. But at this church, I'm like, oh, I can definitely wear church hats. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show we get dressed. Let me get Which dressed. hat I'm wearing next Sunday, right, Nick? <laughs> So I feel like yeah, when, I love my church hats too. What? I, I, every night, my church hats, I love them. I, yeah, you you can wear them too. But yeah, you can wear them too. Cause Nick yeah. came, bro. I was like, oh wow. They thought Nick Nick was in the play. Catch you up. Um, how to wife becomes the other woman. Plug. You could get the book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Bob Boy Press. Still, um, and she plays Sister Betty, the church secretary. People didn't realize she was the same person no, after. they did not. They with, still didn't believe it. Your sister was wondering when she seen the picture of me afterwards with make, my makeup after I took the old lady makeup off and everything and dressed. She was like, I still don't believe that is the same person <laughs> that played the story. Yes, it's a put it back. A couple of weeks ago, I was cracking up. But you do need, you need us, you need the sister Betty and you need the younger people. Everybody needs to come together collectively for the same goal. And that's to save souls. Real talk. I'm going to put it on out there. Now, I'm glad that there's different churches for different people. Now, your church, and like you said, it's, you know, somewhat like a AA. And that's great. I'm glad they have that. I would not be a good candidate for that church. Right. And the reason that I wouldn't be a good candidate for that church is the very reason why I sit by myself because I have to focus. I have the tendency to take on somebody else's issues where I feel my heart is out on my sleeve. Like, oh my gosh, they don't went through all of that. Here you go. You know what I mean? No lie. My ex-husband, we were going to Mexico. He was like, give me your money. I was like, what? He was like, give me your money before we went there. I didn't understand why. We got there. You had little children. They was trying to sell little Chico, the little gums. I was like, oh my gosh. He already knew because he knows me. So I would have been like with nothing because I really gave it all away. And when I sit at church, you know, when they see me, I, be, I always want to go to the balcony. And then you have churches. They're like, no lie, because I love this one church I did. And I wanted to go to the balcony. They said, no, we're filling up the first floor. Problem is, if I know these people don't have food at their house, I don't hear the word. I'm wondering if they ate last night. When I'm in the balcony and I'm usually, bam, right there first row, I, I'm just straight with the speaker. And even if you see me like out, not that I'm being antisocial, if you see me out, I'm either right up front just with the speaker. I don't know who's behind me. I'm focused. But once, if I'm there and amongst I had different, I'm easily distracted as well. And I just have that like, oh my gosh, I want, I don't want to know their story. I don't, not that I'm being ignorant. I don't want to know your story because it affects me differently. So there, look, so there you have it. Lovely people. I am not being, uh, acting like I'm above or better than anybody or being rude. It's just, if I'm there for a purpose, I have to get that, you know, get that done and taken care of. But that's why I sit in the balcony. But then this particular church, they stopped. I was like, okay, so I left. They didn't understand who I left. But you know, I quit. I will delete and quit something in a minute. <laughs> I, I will buy, see it. Look, no, relationships, yep. if it ain't working, delete, block, I'm done. But, I'm pissed to delete you. Yeah, but, <laughs> but even like, I will quit a church. And not that I quit the church because of it might be the formalities that I'm just not that I'm not a fit. Like I'll speak to everybody, but that's not the fit. Just like the energy. If I, if I walk in the door and I got a different energy, I'm greeted with this energy. I'm not going to go. I'm not, if I got to walk through the door and literally debate with you, why I can't do something. And that's with the hand sanitizer. Cause I told y'all about the hand sanitizer. Um, I went to a church and they they wanted you to use the hand sanitizer. I had hand sanitizer and I opted to use my own, but they said, no, I needed to use their hand sanitizer. Well, I'm allergic to, I'm allergic to it. 
And my hands already were raw because I wash them all the time. So, you know, that was going to be fire on my right. hands. Like, oh, I was like, I can't use that. I said, I do have some and I can use my own in front of you if you like. She's like, no, you have to use our hand sanitizer. So your formalities. I was like, OK. I said, I can leave. Not, It's not an issue. So what happens is if I went past, look, if I went past go, my energy is stuck back there at my greeting. So I can't even get a word because I'm still stuck at my interest, what I was met with. Okay. What I don't understand, though, Mel, is once you told her that you couldn't use that hand and tie, did you tell her you were allergic to it? Uh-huh. And, and she, and she, she could clearly see my hands were raw. And she still tried to make you use it? And, and see, here's the thing. I don't know. I, I think just the formalities, like, this is my job. This is what I need to do. You, you know what I mean? Regardless, when somebody tells you that they have an allergy to something, that should have changed and been like, okay, you know, you got your own, can you, you know, and then let it go. You can't make nobody because what if you would have went on here and gave in and used it and went and sat in church and had an allergic reaction and you throw clothes up or something like that, then how would, how would the church feel? No way. Well, not- no way, because they would be like, which they knew they was allergic to it. Well, I feel like if you're in that position Go ahead. and like you've been assigned a certain assignment and you know, you're not sure what to do, that's when you go get your supervisor. That's when you pass off the issue to the higher person. Like, oh, okay, well let me go get Sister Mary and she'll handle it with you. Problem solved. Yeah, you would think, but guess what? Now imagine this, you going in to be open to hear the word of God mm-hmm. and you're met with all of this. I don't want to cause problems. I don't even want to be here. I'm cool. I'll wait till when that's over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then I'll come back or I'll just, I have the option to watch online. Uh, if you guys out there in the listening audience, y'all got a solution. Let your girl know. Hit me up. Comment down below or text or something. Look, let me see. Cause y'all know I'm bad for uh, checking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Text the number 619-902-2287. Let me know what you think. What's another solution? But I knew my energy wouldn't be the same. So it's like, because I would have still been annoyed. Like, oh my gosh. It's almost like, okay, I'm allergic to strawberries. Well, you got to eat a strawberry in order to come in here. Huh? I'm allergic to it. No, no, no. But I'm saying that's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's So I would not, I would not eat the strawberry because I ain't crazy to lightweight possibly harm myself just to get into air quotes, this club or group. But at what point, because God gives you discernment, you would think this person would be like, okay, you don't have to go get no supervisor. I know this is my job, but this person is allergic and can't use it. So I saw, you know, she said that she would use hers in front of me. But discernment people, at what point do you use your brain? Well, you know what? And you do have a point. You do have a point, but you have people that are in position. And I do know a lot of churches, which is another thing. As soon as you join a church, they want you to get active in the church. Wait a minute. Now I got to get busy. And and that, and that's another thing, too. When you, you know, you want them to get active so that they don't get back out. But if I'm a babe in Christ, I need to learn everything I need to learn. Because if it's a job for me, I take my job seriously. So now while I'm, I can't get a word standing there because I'm on duty. So I'm, I'm focused and looking to make sure nobody pass out. Do, are you hydrated? You know what I mean? So those are things that I'd be like, mm, I'm still, I need to learn before I actually get a job in the church, honestly. I, I just got to be honest. That kind of happened to me. I um, joined a friend's church back in 2012. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like it started out small and somebody he grew up with would play, was the minister of music. You know, mm-hmm. he played, he sang and everything. So we got our little, gathered our little choir. Like immediately, you know, I'm trying to be a faithful servant of God and trying to change my life. But they was like, okay, we got a Bible study. We do. child, I got put <laughs> in the choir and then the praise team. That's cool. You know, I was in a choir when I was younger. My, you know, my, my church. Mm-hmm. That was fine until we had uh, the pastor's anniversary. We had all the churches coming. 
and the minister of music decided he wanted certain people to sing and lead songs. Sir, and my last name is Keller, but I don't. He's like your last name. My last name is Keller, but I don't sing like the rest of them. What did you talk about? <laughs> so I listened. That man was adamant. It made me lead a song in front of all them people, including my old church members. My cousin, you know, she came, you know, with her church and everything. So I had to sit there and I told him, I said, okay, fine. You will have to sing with me because this is not what I do. So you, so singing in the choir was fine, but you didn't like being put on the spot. Yeah, I was put on the spot and I did not like that, you know, but my cousin after church, like my cousin, even my mom then was like, we didn't know you could do that. Neither did I, but I bet you y'all won't hear me again. <laughs> so so with situations so with situations like that you know you do have it's like okay well you in the choir but then they try to get you so busy you be in the choir next thing you got to do this you got to do that and then your whole life especially married couples I know some married couples who had issues when the wife you know they both joined the church and then now the wife is active in the church well now her husband is on standby because she has to do so much in the church. You, you got to have a balance. And I'm not knocking the churches that need to help and like, okay, well, and then they guilt you into work for the Lord. Not all of them the same. Real talk, though. They guilt you into that and you be like, okay, well, you need to do this. You need to. Okay, that's fine. But is it for the Lord? Because I can talk to people outside the church and minister to them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or is it because you short staff and you need somebody to make this operation work? Yeah, that was the most uncomfortable that I've ever felt in church. And the funny thing is, but you prevailed, even, right? Even people that you know from my my from my because that's still my church. You know, I just joined my friend's church, just tried out, but you know, went back to my old church. But even th- they were like, we did not know that you could sing. Neither did I until this man browbeat me. <laughs> oh, okay. And, and and that's a and that's a good thing though. But but that was a good thing. But you don't want to be put on the spot. Now, did you feel? I want to ask Amber D this. Do you feel like you want to? Uh, you cheat? You cheating on your old church? Since you go visit another one? No, because that my old church isn't my home church, and my church that I grew up in is two hours away so it's not like I can go there um definitely in my hometown which is very tiny I would feel like I'm like cheating on my church if I attended a different church but I also um the the few other churches that I had visited I didn't like as much as the church my home church because probably just because of a level of familiarity or whatever um so so no no No. I didn't like I was cheating on it but I think it's interesting because she had literally just did a message on work-life balance in the church and how um it's you know it's a marathon and it's about endurance and a lot of people start in ministry and then quit and that's a lot of the times it's because they are put to work too soon when the priority is supposed to be cultivating their relationship with God not only that when you do start working in the church you have to prioritize maintaining your personal relationship with God because working in the church is really hard. It is. And that is just, I gave you, you know, my experience and my experience is I can't, while I'm in church, work, I'm in work mode. So I can't merge the two. Not that, you know, when you're at work, they'd be like, don't talk about politics or religion You when you're at work. So if you're at work, and this is just me, some people can multitask. I'm like, one track. This is what I'm doing. Care for the people. Let me make sure everybody is safe. So that's where I would be. If I'm in the church and I'm getting the word, and that's what I'm there for, I can't get both of them at the same time. Because somebody's... I'm a hundred, a hundred. One is going to lack. And maybe you might be passed out, especially if the word get too good. You over there, they, they have to come tap me and be like, Mel, Mel, she fell out. Oh, snap, my fault. You know, <laughs> because I'm into what I'm into. But when you are sitting there, I said, that that has to be hard. 
because it's a job and they be like, oh, well, you're there. I know somebody who played the piano in the church and, and I was totally outdone because we look at like if you're in the minister, the minister of music, like Nick's example, what she was talking about, you think that um, they're into the church. I would think you go there, you're there for four, you know, four services, three, four services every Sunday. This guy told me this was in PA. He was like, oh, I don't believe in God. Listen, I was I was floored because in my mind, it's like, oh, yeah, I know you do. You know, I just assumed it. Right. Because you're there. And he said to me, he was like, it's just a job. Oh no no! But no, yeah, and I think that. Uh, but but I can't be upset with that. I appreciated his honesty. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. But how, yeah, how it, are you? So, so go I ahead, Amber. Like, what's your thoughts? So on the flip side of it, it's like, oh, okay, well, if you're not a believer, you shouldn't have this position. But then when you're like, oh, okay, well, you should just volunteer for the church. But it's like, no, we need to be compensated if the church is able for your time, work, and labor. So is it a job? Or is it charity work? And I think that definitely like positions like the p- pianist and other positions, like you should be financially compensated for the work you do. Like it should be a paid position in the church because it's like a whole job. And I found out that when I found out that our pianist wasn't even a member of our church, I was shocked. Because the same thing, like you would think that, oh, well, of course they're always here. Of course they're nope, nope. Not it's a all. job. And she, it was a job. And she was actually a member of a, uh, she had membership at a different church. Um, so, yeah, you just never know. It's interesting. And then some places, let's be real, some church homes, they feel as though, okay, well, you grew up here and we are a committed people. And sometimes you can't tell the church no. I, I don't right. know why, you know, but after Dude told me that, I was like, what? And then, like, when I would do speaking and game, because you feel bad, and it's so crazy because you do feel bad. You feel like, okay, watch volunteer. It's like, I'm doing this for God. This another guy said to me, they'll pay somebody else to come and speak. You need to set your price. And my thoughts is, give me what you think I'm worth. And sometimes you can set your price, and they'll give you more than what you actually expected instead of giving a dollar amount. You know, so um, when he said that, I was like, he was like, the church has money and he's on the inside. He was like, the church has the money. He said, and then you have churches that will take everything you're giving them for free. They'll take that. Thank you. You know what I mean? He was like, get what you're worth. And so I started looking at things differently. I was like, hmm. And it would never be a problem. But it was my own self that was like, that's not right. You know what I mean? That's not you know, I should do this. But when you look at it, it's like, it's a business. And I feel like, yeah, it is a business. And people really think like are of two minds about it where they're like, yeah, they have this idea in their mind that churches just ran on altruism and charity. But I mean, it is like, it is, has four walls. It has a roof. Things break down. And if you are a person, it's, and I feel like this, I see this more with men a lot too. Like you're kind of handy and you're like, okay, well, yeah, I can install the church, a new hot water tank. And it's like a three day project. You don't think that man should be compensated for that? Like, come on, you know, it's he doing it for the church. No. Exactly. Like, no, no, there, you know, there has to be, financial management and it, it it does or how about the people who feel like the pastor need to be driving a raggedy car yeah. talk about why is the pastor driving he riding around in and i'm using this um as an example why he got a cadillac i said well should he be i had a conversation with that. i said should he be catching the bus because just like you said amber do they look at it as charity yeah. It's a job. It's a job. They get paid. And but some people don't want to get paid or they want you to get paid the least. And that's what's crazy. It's like, okay, you saving souls and you expect me to get paid the least. I can't even live. But it's okay for you to go ahead and work wherever you're working at and get yeah, paid man. and as your boss for a raise, but I don't deserve one. And I'm up at the hospital every time somebody's sick. Whose house right. I gotta go over here for the funeral. I don't even have time for myself. But I right. should be doing it, and I'm using air quotes in in the in the name of the Lord. Uh, 
Go ahead, wear yourself down. Be, you know, fuck free. Who, who would want to even be in that? I don't, I'm not applying for that job. If I can't even feed my family. Go ahead. I have, a, I have a theory. I feel like it's the people who don't ever volunteer for at church who have never gotten to the point of exhaustion in ministry that think you are supposed to be working in church for free. Of course. Like, they're not supposed to have boundaries. You must have never been through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you must, you must have never volunteered if you really think that these people that are in higher positions at church shouldn't be fairly compensated. That's my theory. It's a good one. Right. It's a good one. Probably haven't been. Or the ones that get so upset because as soon as something happened in the community, which is really blows my mind, they're like, oh, we're supposed to go to the church. Oh, the church couldn't even feed us. Wouldn't even give me nothing to eat. And then you want to slander that church. Did you, when you got your stamps, did you go and be like, well, here, I got some canned goods. Right. To donate. Right. Right. <laughs> That's why I'm like, where is it supposed to come from? Oh, look, as a pastor, I already got to catch the bus because you said I ain't allowed to have no decent car. I can't, you know, to even drive wherever I need to go. No money. Oh, the church. Oh, yeah. Look at him. He's robbing the people of the church. Huh? But you want to come to the church when you're in need. Sorry, the church is in need and we don't have anything to give you. And then you want to slander the church. Come on, community. We got to do better. You, you, we got to do. You got to deposit if you want to withdraw. Come on. Right. You know, so so we do need to wake up on that. I want to talk about this school. Well, not even a school shooting. The little six year old boy who shot the first grade teacher. And they said, oh, yeah, in Virginia, this is down on Newport, probably like the DMV area. I'm thinking uh, Virginia, where there's a school to school. What was it? Um, Rich Neck, Rich Neck Elementary. So they had about, I think, uh, 500, 550 students was the last I saw. And it's from grades K through five. So smaller school. And the first grader brought a gun and shot the teacher. So the first grader is the six-year-old. Let me say that. He, um, he, she, I don't know. They didn't disclose the sex. Um, is in custody. And they said that the shooting was intentional. Now. What's your thoughts <laughs> Go ahead. What's your what, what's your question? How in the hell get the bail? Did a child get a hold of a gun? That is the parent's fault, and the parent needs to be in custody as well. Now, let me say this: sometimes, and not justifying it, but let's look at it from all angles. How many times? Think back when you were young that you did something or had something that your parent had no idea that you even had knowledge of anything. I, I write that so it could be somebody, somebody could have passed it off on the bus. I mean, I, 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 I get it. Go ahead. What you got, Amber D? Oh, have they been able to, have they figured out whose gun it is? Um, not yet. The story's still unfolding, so they'll be able. Yeah, okay, because yeah, I, that's a possibility. I feel like it's unlikely, though. I feel like definitely, and I feel like there was a previous case. I think it was up in Michigan where the parents ended up getting charged as well as their child. He was a high school student, and I. But the parents that, knew. Remember, the parents. They the, knew what the father they, gave they, it to him as a birthday gift or something. Exactly. That was the difference. Exactly, and I feel like that is. Hopefully, it's going to be precedent setting in like the American judicial system, and parents are going to start getting charged because I feel like that's what's going to really help suppress these school shootings and stuff is when parents start being punished for the actions of their children and not making sure that they're not getting a hold of these weapons. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, if if it was a parent's gun, then they definitely need to be prosecuted and held accountable. Right. If it wasn't their gun, then I believe personally that there are children who have psychological issues. Okay, and okay. Let's speaking of psychological issues, this child is six years old. So let let's bring it. I'm sorry. Sorry, I gotta go to school real quick. Six years old. Let's deal with the psychologist uh uh Piaget. Now 
it from two years old in growth and development, people. I'm sorry. Let, let me put that out there in growth and development. So from two years old to seven years old, that's that pre-operational stage, according to Piaget. I say Jean, y'all say Jean. <laughs> but you guys can look it up, okay? And it's, he's a theorist. From two to seven, that's that pre-operational phase or stage where you mimic actions, okay? Where you pretend, you know what I mean? Those are, that's that whole thing where it's like, I'm pretending I'm the mommy, I'm pretending, you pretend you're the daddy. That pretend play and the imitation phase. So if you're watching, not realizing that you actually die. So when they said, Oh, it was intentional. I'm sure a child sitting there, boom, here's a gun. I'm going to shoot it. Yeah, it was intentional, but I'm thinking that the person is going to get back up. It, you, it's the pre-operational. Yeah, the yes, it's the pre-operational stage, according to Piaget. But you can go. I ain't going to go to Freud. Freud is my sex guy. <laughs> <laughs> he be out hey? But if you look at all of them, you know, the four major ones. It's that phase in growth and development. So I'm like, yeah, it was intentional. Did he mean to kill her? Yeah, but thinking she's gonna get back up. And I'm glad that she's um, she's doing okay now. So I'm glad he did not kill her. Now, when you say the parents, it is so important to watch what your children are watching. Watch the movies that you watch around your children because clearly there's an issue. But to Put it on this six-year-old, and if things had turned out worse, I don't know how I would be feeling, and you're going to ruin this child's life. And if you look at growth and development, you guys can check that out. Google it. It's, it's there. It's in black and white before the new black and white because everybody can throw some stuff up on Google, okay? Look in the books. <laughs> you will see, after research, you'll see where the mindset of a six-year-old so not to say it's okay, but it's like, yeah, he, he probably said, yeah, I planned on, you know, it was intentional, but come on. But see that, and see that goes back to that, what I was saying, they're trying to start in kindergarten with these uh, psychological evaluations. They, they're already there. You right. should know what you're dealing with at this age, even though you might have one or two that's a little off, you know what I'm saying? But you watch that and you, you know what I mean? You kind of. Geared them in the right direction. Go ahead. What you got? I feel like if it wasn't, I feel definitely, I don't know. I don't know. But I would assume that I'm thinking that staff usually observe patterns and behaviors in children. And this child's probably coming from an unsafe, unstable, violent home environment to normalize. Oh, when you're really angry with someone, you go shoot them. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there, that wasn't just, he didn't just pull that out of the air. I don't think he got Oh, I don't think he pulled it out of the air. He saw it, but. You know, from what is it, you know, uh, Roger Rabbit and Wiley Coyote. That's not, I don't think that's something that's picked up from cartoons. I think that is something that's picked up from the home environment. And I feel like, at the very least, those parents need to be really thoroughly investigated because it seems like. In the best case scenario, it's neglect, but more than likely outright abuse. Um, and you're just not teaching your, your a horrible role model. First of all, I wouldn't be surprised if the parents, you know, handled guns or whatever, or were violent, violent with each other, violent with the child, violent with other people. You know, like you said, just exposing this child to all kinds of stuff. And exposure, because how many people, all right, Nick, check this out. How many people watch, what's that show? I, I don't even want to put it because you know 50 be out here trying to sue people that don't have nothing. But you got certain shows that are violent. And yeah. it is not his fault. It's not 50's fault that you are watching that in front of your child. It's the parents' That's fault. Right. That's right. And it's like, we've talked about this many episodes ago, how there's a lot of these young parents um, or very poor parents or very ignorant parents, very lazy parents that don't want to take the time to learn anything. Lazy. I'm going to go with lazy because I ain't even going to go with poor. They're lazy and they don't want to make modifications to their lifestyle and restrict when they can watch things and when they can do things because they've had a child now. 
And so now they're exposing their child to all of this adult content. Oh, so honey, that one show. What is that show? P Valley? And, and a lot of people, I heard them talking about it. I watched a little snippet of it. Turn that off. Especially when you're around it children is, because it's yeah, not geared. It's not coming back on for a while. And, and even, it's oh, it's not. Forever. But you know, yeah. but when you, when you have children who are learning and mimicking, like I said, Dor- like Piaget said, six, two to seven, that's the, that's your pre-operational phase. They mimic what they see. It's up to the parent to say, oh, okay. Like you said, make modifications. You're going to have to, you're going to have to be selfless when you are raising a child. I cannot watch this until this child goes to sleep. I have to watch this in my own time and I can't have it on while my child is here because I'm going to tell you something about a child. They always want to please the parent. So if this is what the parent is into, that child is going to go that direction just so that they can get that love and good job. You know, the pat on the back to say you did a good job. I mean, we got to be careful. Got to be careful. That's all I say. Mm-hmm. All right, can we go to um, Prince Harry? Why are they doing Prince Harry like that? His book. Wait, what's his book called? Did you see it? Uh-uh. Prince Harry has a book out and everybody's tripping on the book, especially Don Lemon. I got a problem with Don Lemon. Sir, I, I, I mean, really, he said he had an issue with the way that uh, Prince Harry put all the details in his book, saying how, you know, how he was brought up and all this other stuff where he felt like, I got to think of the name of the book. Oh, help me out, people. Like, if you get the opportunity to look, it's a new book and it, was, it wasn't it was supposed to, it came out a little earlier than it was supposed to. But anyway, in that book, I'm going to get it too. Uh, Prince Harry was talking about how he was uncomfortable. And Don Lemon had the nerve to say that he was uncomfortable with the details that he put in it. Now, here's what's interesting. Don Lemon, you're over here in the United States. Him spilling the tea of what happened over there in England. Isn't that where they are? What? Not anymore. I think they're in Canada now. Is the book called Spare? Spare. Yes. Thank you. So that. But why do why are we so focused on how he's making the kingdom look over there? And we are right over here and dog President Obama. Dogging where we at. He said his dad, well, let me get this real quick. He said that um, his father, the king now, used to make jokes talking about, are you really my son? Oh, oh, y'all got to get that book. Y'all got to get it. So... You have people that are upset about his experience. He's sharing his experience. So my exactly. question is, is it okay? Um, it's okay for me to be uncomfortable. But if I share how uncomfortable I was, this is a problem because I'm making other people feel uncomfortable. Like, well, is it? Is so, go ahead. What you that got? Standard. That is so standard. And it's so basic of why victims are shunned in silence and it's so unacceptable you do not get to dictate what someone else is sharing their experience because it made you feel uncomfortable and what comes to my mind is people who have suffered like childhood abuse like childhood sexual abuse like it's a very uncomfortable childhood incest it's very uncomfortable and you just start to feel so icky and dirty and you're just listening, right? Uh-huh. And so because now you feel uncomfortable, it's like, actually, could you could you shut up? Like, no, that's not it's, okay. That is terrible. It no. is. But in that something, so we, and I'm just using myself as an example, so we go through something, we have to just be quiet because you guys are uncomfortable. What about how I'm feeling? What about what I'm dealing with? So to, I need to protect you from what I went through. That, that, Listen, y'all know I have no filter and I don't care. If I don't care about nobody knowing it, I'm going to say it period point blank. There are things that I keep to myself because that, that's my business that I don't share. But then if I share it, I don't care about anybody knowing it. If you feel uncomfortable, walk away. Don't listen to whatever. To, you know, let it go in one ear and out the other over your head or whatever. But you're not. Ain't no, I'm never gonna let anybody silence me. Period. 
Okay, so it's you got the thoughts. I went and, you, I'm uncom- and I felt uncomfortable and I feel like sharing. So you have the same okay. views as Prince what Harry. About the silence, sir. What do you have to say about the people who want to silence? And, and that's them? what's crazy. What's crazy is you're not upset with them. You're upset with the fact that he's sharing his experience. And oh, wait, don't do that. Don't tarnish the whatever it is, the kingdom or whatever they call it, the program. Don't do that. Oh, it's going to make all of them look bad. But it's okay for all of them to make me feel bad. It's so interesting. We got to go to this comment real quick. And this is regarding children. Go ahead. Amber, do you want to read that? Okay. So Samara DJ Smeech Hearns of Facebook said, those little kids are allowed to play video games that ought not. People don't think it affects how they think, but these are the things that the military uses such tools to desensitize the troops so they can pull a trigger uh, when necessary. I completely agree. Okay. Now let's see here. There's another comment. You want to go ahead? And so the same person said, where do they think the phrase tell all books comes from? What are they surprised about? The queen is gone. Stop it. Okay. And that's regarding Prince Harry's situation. That's his family. If he feel like sharing what what was going on, that is that is him. If sir, uh, Mr. Lemon, sir, if you are uncomfortable with it, change the channel. Don't read it. Don't buy it. Period. Point blank in conversation. That's how you do that. My you don't have to read it. It is it's nuts. We're silencing people, silencing people, and in the same breath, we're saying um. Text 988 if you need, you know, if you're in a crisis and you need to talk to somebody. But soon as somebody decides to talk, you want to shut them up. Like, make it make sense. They don't. And it never will. Like, yeah. So, so the masses, I, well, I'm, I'm saying, I'm using air quotes for the listening audience. The masses is uncomfortable with this because you have an image that you built up in your head. You know, you already have what you imagine things to be. So now you just tarnish the whole thing. Like, wait, what? This was going on, and that is to me. I think that's kind of cruel, though. And then they were talking about how him and William never got along; they always were fighting. And they showed uh, Prince Harry in this yeah, book. Can tell, really, but like he, the dynamic whenever they're together, you can tell. Well, you have that, too. but you have that second child syndrome too, mm-hmm. where this is the one. Okay, you go ahead and follow along. All is well, you know. What I mean, if that's what you want to do. But if you, when I was looking at different documentaries that they had over there, the different shows that they had, well, movies that they made or documentaries, I saw like the grandfather and I saw how the, um, you know, the personality, I said, oh, that's the grandfather's personality, Prince Harry's, you know what I mean? And, you know, watching, I was like, oh, he's a funny guy. He is too, but he didn't fit in. But for his father, who to me, he actually looks uh, like a better version of his dad. Prince Harry and Mm -hmm. I was like at first Prince William looked like his father but I was like you don't want to look like them because they ain't the the most attractive real talk but Prince Harry he had the ginger hair and it was um he had he was I can't remember what show I was watching where they showed a picture of Princess Diana and her boyfriend which she met after she gave birth to Prince Harry and he happened to have red hair and he was saying that that was his father. I said, that's... The, the, the king said that? Yes! Yeah, and he would be joking. And that's what he said. He didn't think, he thought it was not a funny joke. When yeah, he would say, I are you my child? Agree, like, but I do feel like with the birth order thing, one thing, I, I feel like back in the day when people used to have like nine and ten children, people would blame those sibling rivalries and issues on... Like that's, well, maybe that's that child's personality. Whereas because people have fewer children now, I feel like there's an overemphasis on birth order. Like if if Prince Harry and William, if they had like four or five more siblings, they'd be like, well, that's just how he is because, you know, he's one of 12 or something, you know, and it's in, and that birth order significance starts to decrease, especially when you're in like in a gaggle of children. Now it's more just like, well, this is how you're choosing to operate. And, and, Did you and, say you know, gaggle? I have not. <laughs> a gaggle. I ain't heard that in so long. They have gaggles of children. Girl, they, 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 they bringing it back. They bringing it back. Back to Kiki Ward, but like, geez, I got you. 
Go ahead. Yeah, so I feel like it might just be his personality. And, you know, some people are more sensitive or whatever, just interpret things. I feel like hopefully you can, as you age and mature and go through different stages of life, you you can look back at your childhood and see things differently, or, uh-huh. you know, just have a new appreciation for it. Um, but I know that it, with the royal family and all the history that goes along with it, you know, it's... Um, probably super magnified that he's the second born. So. Yeah, and then so. you seen their where they were staying, where his house was. I was laughing. Y'all gotta watch our Prince of Harry love story. It is not a bad thing, you know. It, it, it just blows my mind that the American people, and we already know the history of Queen Elizabeth, okay? We know the history, and you have them set to a higher standard. Why are we doing that with our own country? Well, I feel like that's because when Queen Elizabeth died, oh, the memes were so satisfying because I'm like, <laughs> was it just me? Because they're like, and who cares? Like, they're like, oh, the queen is dead. And we're like, bruh, she's not. And she, she was going to get it. I mean, that's what people do when they get old. Yeah. Now, that's what you do when you get old. Yeah, yeah. they had some memes going out there, though. But I just was just. I was outdone. I'm like, I'm like, we're here, but the respect that was given for her, we don't even do in our own country, which is to me is this hardening is sad. And it's like, wait, you're quick to cut your own down, but you raise somebody else up. What it's what's going on? And let's let's bring it down in your own house. You're quick to cut your own down in your own house and build somebody else up. Outside, that's an issue. That is an issue for me. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute. Like we we need to go back to the drawing board, <laughs> get a whole new sheet, and say, okay, this is the nucleus. Let's start here, and let's do it. Going back to the young man, you got to fix your household, fix your foundation, see what's really going on and why he thought to do this because clearly somebody showed him. Or he saw it somewhere because he mimicked the action. All right, Tristan Thompson. His mom passes away abruptly. Now, uh, Chloe, Rubel can't stand the Kardashians. When we talk about the Kardashians, he'd be like, "Uh uh-uh. So, Chloe goes over, you know, to support because she has, they got the little four-year-old daughter, True, and then they got a five-month-old. Did y'all know that? Uh Now, here's my thing. Her body don't look like she birthed a child five months old. Now, do you think that people... Huh? Right, but do you think somebody else... Did she use a surrogate? Do you, let me ask this question. How do you feel with people using surrogacy because they don't want their body to be out of shape versus a medical issue? What, what's your thoughts on that? Go ahead, Amber D. That's their business, and it's their choice if they have the funds to do it. As long as it's not being supported by tax dollars, you spend your money on what you want to. I think it's selfish, a little bit, and a little bit lazy, um, and definitely like very like vain. But hey, that's that's your money you're spending, and I'm hoping. And as long as the surrogates are being treated fairly and they're being fairly compensated they're not like being you know coerced or abused or whatever then yeah do your thing I guess go ahead Nick what you got I don't care that's what I mean <laughs> if they got it go ahead and do it I'm with Amber though that's selfish but like with her sister her sister had to use the surrogate for what the last one because she had complications with the previous pregnancies. So that's understandable. Um, same thing with Candy Burris. She used surrogate for the last one because she had a complication with her, you know, pregnancy with their son. So that's something different, but it they listen, they got the money they can do it with a what else that or she had surgery right after because a lot of people do those mommy and me makeovers immediately. So well, let, let me, um, those are nice. Let me be clear. I just want to say, I'm not saying that Chloe 
had a surrogate at all. I'm just saying they just popped up. I'm just saying for the sake of the conversation, how do you feel about that? Well, I'll tell you how I feel about it. Yes, it's selfish. And what about the women out there who can't carry children? You're taking, and I don't want to sound rude, but you're kind of taking the surrogate mothers that are out there that choose to do it off the market for your vanity. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, here's somebody who truly needs it. So for your vanity, like you said, the money, so they paying top dollar. So I don't have a chance at having a child because I don't have the money. Now, if that's the case, and if I was a child, which I am a child, but if I was a child and if I knew that my mother didn't want to carry me and had me in somebody else's snatch, that, yeah. you know, I'm, I got to come out somebody else's snatch because you didn't want to gain weight. I would be feeling some type of way as a child. Like, well, huh? Because childbirth is definitely labor. It is definitely, that's work. When you said lazy, that's some work. Go ahead. What you got? I, it's not even lazy. It truly is damaging. Like, and this kind of goes into like the sacrifices women wait for motherhood and how it's, I would feel like if I was a child in that situation, like, okay, my mom loved me, but there is definitely a hard limit. There's a hard limit. The mother's love, my mother's love is not endless and eternal and undying. Like, no, she will never put me over herself. And that's why she put me in some other woman's body. to. And that's how I would feel. Because it really, I mean, women's, our bodies are amazing. We're designed to create life, right? But it is, I mean, it messes you up. Okay, like you you changed. And I feel like because there's this overall lack of appreciation for motherhood. And then you, you got men diminishing the importance of motherhood. And then you've got women also diminishing it by their choices and actions. It becomes this more trivial and insignificant thing in our culture. And and let me tell you, let, let me say this. It does change you. Sex is totally different after you become a mother. Yeah. Because then you think, listen here, that pain is something that you'll never forget. And it's so bad that you... Forget the pain, but you know it hurt. Like the actual, like it's undescribable. And he'd be like, oh, how was it? It's undescribable until you go back in for your second or your third. You'd be like, this is it. This is what it was. <laughs> so be like, I can't describe it. Look, three days later after you see the child, then you'd be like, oh. Now, I did get some advice for people out there who's having children. Let me say this. I don't want to scare you to death. I got the best advice, uh, Chathia Cross, and she has a married, I can't remember her married name right now, but I remember she had her daughter, Isis, and I said, did it hurt? Flat out honest. She was like, absolutely. She said, but it's worth it when you see your child. That was the best advice ever, because I needed to know, because the measurements wasn't adding up. Like, I was like, this, wait a minute. I ain't lying, the measurements wasn't adding up. I'll never forget it. I was like, ah. But she said that, and it was so true. And then it's like, okay, then you had a child, and boom, 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 everything back to normal. Then you'd be like, oh, I'm pregnant. Okay, boom. And then when you get ready to go, oh, this was the reason I said I ain't having no more. (laughs) So when you say, the sacrifices that you go through, it does matter. And I would think if I was a child, there would be a limit. Like, you didn't even want to mess up your body. So I know it's you first and not me. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see here. Do we got a question? Go ahead. So uh, Samara DJ Smeech Hearns of Facebook said, I have a cousin on my mama's side who had kids and never looked like she just pushed, snapping back like, Meanwhile, I, (laughs) 23 years later, never mind. (laughs) Yeah, and I feel like if I, um, I was literally just watching this last night discussing um, pelvic floor weakness in women after childbirth and like um, incontinence. And 
these bodybuilders, <laughs> this is a particular bodybuilder. She's a woman. She has pelvic floor. Her pelvic floor is just destroyed, basically. Um, and she was peeing in the gym while she was deadlifting. And, you know, people were shocked that... <laughs> Look at Meg's face! Like you're just being on the floor. Who were totally, and the guy who was covering the video, he he does strength training and stuff like that, was shocked. You know, he was totally. He was like, "What? Like peeing is this? It, it's this thing that happens?" And so he started <laughs> researching it, and he learned that yeah, lots of women suffer from incontinence, especially after a vaginal childbirth. And and then furthermore, there was a lot of men that were shocked that this that this weightlifter was receiving so much support in her comments because she posted a video and well i would think she would tighten up that muscle right and i feel like you know there is therapies available like you can go to specialists to work on that and so and then other people and i'm this was to work on what except in peeing on yourself in public right we're saying you know this is i believe urine is unsanitary some people like some people believe it it's not unsanitary i believe personally human waste it's sterile and yeah like and Proper gym etiquette, in my opinion, is, you know, you wipe down your equipment. And, you know, they were saying, like, well, why didn't she at least, you know, put a pad on the floor or put a towel down? Or oh, my God. Listen, y'all, y'all don't know how bad I, I got this word in my head about to be like, this this clown just pissing I on the bitch. The right. Yes, they have you know, things. And that's, where, and that's where I was coming from. But it was really fascinating how many people, how many men, it was mostly men, who did not know that women and they said well actually i know that you know women can have that problem after they give birth to children you know your pelvis it just becomes very weak but everyone i know all the women i know it will be like a little bit like a little trick this was a full-on release we were uh, talking about this <laughs> yeah yeah we did yeah <laughs> we about yeah it's a whole like it was so full-on yeah, full like okay you sure she wasn't a diabetic? Because see, that, <laughs> when you're a diabetic, you'll be like, listen, here, oh, I, I can't hold it, hold on. Right. And and I get, yeah, I get, yeah, that right, and then you be like, boom, and bam, if you start a little bit, you be like, I got to release right now, I can't hold it no more. Yes, you do have that weakness. However, um, depending on the situation, if, like, you cough too hard, you laugh too hard, sometimes you sneeze, you might get a little seepage, you're drunk, you might... Pee a little bit and then be like, oh, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just boom. Brandy did it all the time. But, but, no, you can't. Okay, so you dating somebody, you just, like, peeing, like, you just gonna pee in the bed? Like, how we gonna put our mattress out when we need a new one? You got the big piss stain on the block. Everybody know you pee in the bed. Like, (laughs) how do you get rid of that? I mean, I think if what people were saying is like, okay, so this happens. First of all, she's a power lifter. And so it's only when she's lifting and when it's from like a squat position. So it's like, okay, you know that this is going to happen when you're like maxing out. Why? So you know this is going to happen or likely to happen when you're doing this specific task. How about empty your bladder before you start? Yeah. Yeah. So there are like, ways. Like, yeah, it was. It was interesting. But the point is, the point of that story was that, yeah, women, our bodies get altered after childbirth. And it, it kills me the way women just spit babies out for anybody under any circumstance and completely diminish how how much you're sacrificing your body to bring a child into this world. I think everybody should understand that. I don't understand the people, how they do it when the dad is not there during childbirth. A kudos. To, listen, I have mad respect for a female that go into labor and the dad is not there. Well, or, he probably wasn't there for most of the pregnancy. Right. So that's yeah. even, that's, listen. Why are you, what are you, why are you doing that? Well, I mean, that's not there for you. Well, if you, first of all, if you are for abortions, that's one thing that they're like, okay, well, I got pregnant, I'm done. Now it's the repeat offenders that you'd be like, really, you going to do that again? But <laughs> to be by yourself without the father there I, I have so much respect. Like, I don't know how you can do it. Like, to me, I think it's so important for the father to be there to see the childbirth. I, I think it's, I think it's so important. I witnessed my godson. But come up here. You ain't got to be down there. Come up here. 
Go ahead. Uh-huh. Would you, you now I say come up here. You got to be you got to be above my waist. Like everybody above my waist. You could be in the delivery room. Everybody above my waist. I don't need you to see all that. Matter of fact, I don't even want to see it. When they ask you to be like, oh, you want the mirror? You want to see it? Oh no, I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> Listen, I thought I was about to pass out because I I was in the room with you know my godson's mother. I witnessed my godson being born. A child, I was feeling real woozy. Like, <laughs> Ooh, I already don't like blood, this side of blood, and I'm about to just, cause baby, oh. <laughs> like, now here's a, here's a question. Go ahead, you want to read it for a listening okay, audience? So smart DJ Speech Herbs of Facebook said, "Do you think it makes the baby and responsibility more real to him if he's there?" Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. I think, like I said. That dynamic is, is, and that's why I was going to say, I said it really depends because sometimes, you know, depending on what your man's occupation is, like, he just can't be there. Um, That's different. But if a man's not dedicated to you, like that to me, usually that's established well before the baby is born. And because men are known for switching up after the baby comes, it's like, well, just because he was, even when he's dedicated before the baby, why are you taking that with so much confidence? And giving that so much weight because men have a history of switching up, especially if he ain't bothered to marry you yet after the baby is born. On average, the man will cut out before the baby turns two years old. Look it up. Uh, all right, research. You are the Amber Dean, the <laughs> analyst. Here, here's the thing. I, I, I got to say this. Sometimes women... Let me say sometimes wives, let me say that. So sometimes wives can be in a relationship or, you know, dating and you can have a strong relationship. And when you have a child, the responsibility changes. And there's a lot of women that stop being a wife and become a mother. If you follow me, which that husband is now neglected because this child is first. So it was like, at first you were my wife and yay, boom, 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 boom. We having this baby. This is going to be amazing. And then we have this child who is a part of us and we got nine months on this person. You know, we got nine months on the child over the father who's there before they actually bond. And women tend to stop being wives and become a mother instead of doing both. What you got? Go ahead. You definitely got the uh, multitask. I, but I feel like, because this is, um, so if you learn about, if you research about like divorce and like, you know, uh, couples counseling and stuff like that, usually a couple will go into the counseling after the crisis has already transpired and a major life event is one of the main ones. And I feel like you said when a month, uh, she goes from being a wife into being a, a more of a mother I think the transition is easier when the husband becomes more of a father. So they're transitioning together. He's still prioritizing be a husband. And that's that uneven distribution of the parental responsibility. So they could be shifting together and prioritizing being parents over being partners for that period of time. Like when the baby's like really little and you just, I, to me, it's unavoidable. Like your relationship is going to suffer if they're like under the age of two, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just like, that's a very high intensity time, mental energy commitment period for parenting. When they get older, it's totally, when you have teenagers, like they're, they're practically adults. Like, just like, get out of my face. But, yeah. like, <laughs> well, I guess it's like, why are you even here still? <laughs> but when they're little, it's just, you have to sacrifice that time, you know? And so I feel like what happens is, the wife transitions to mommyhood because mm-hmm. she has nine months on him, and I feel like it's it's just more natural. And then the fa- the husband is still stuck in husband mode, and he is not have cognizant. No, it's time for me to transition into daddy mode, and I need to really prioritize being a father to my offspring, and maybe being a husband for this little period of time. I need to step back from that. So and who? I, so who do you serve first, the husband or the children? Dinner. Well, I feel like in this period of time, the baby is a baby. You're I nursed, so if you're giving, so it's like, okay, are you serving the father his dinner? Or are you giving the baby their bottle first? The baby's getting their bottle first. The, what? What? You know, like to me, that's common sense. But that's that that right in the beginning time 
you know, when they're so little. When they get older, okay, maybe they can wait. But no, you're not going to get priority over a newborn. So. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick DeBoyce. What's your thoughts? Who do you serve first? The actual order is the husband, then the children, then yourself. But if the husband is the husband and the true man of the house, he knows that his family goes first. He'll tell the wife, feed the babies first. Okay. I'm listening to both of y'all. You know the order I say is the husband. But this is tradition. So you got to be a traditional husband. Let's be clear. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. So you feed the husband because I'm going to need you to be good, have some energy so that you could go ahead and go to work and provide the food for us. So it's the husband and then the children. I hear what you're saying, Amber D, especially during that time. But watch what happens. What happens is you feed the baby first. You said the first two years. It's hard to break a habit. And that child is going to be like, hold on, I'm first. And then your husband is competing with the child. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute, without actually sounding like a scumbag. Because who's going to be looking crazy? Be like, and then, of course, we'd be like, you're jealous of the baby? Because the baby is getting more time. So, so yes, the go husband ahead. always comes first. Now, most men, they'll be like, no, go ahead and get the, get the kids first. But the order of it, the traditional order of it is like you said, because that is the, the head of the household that he is the one that will, you know, traditionally supposed to be the one bringing home the bacon so that you can prepare it. He's the one that's taking care of everything. So you need to service his needs first so that he can service you and, and your child's needs. Like that's just, and like with the, and I, and trust me, I listen, I can admit a lot of my faults with some of some, some, you know, a lot of my faults with things like, Sometimes we really need to step back and let a man be a man in your marriage or in your relationship. And us women with these women's rights and I, yeah, I had to sit and evaluate. Sometimes I tried to be the man in the relationship. I wore the pants and that's not good. So we really have to, and that's, the order of it. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to get back to. Maybe if we get back to that, we'll get back to where the men actually lead value and respect their women. What you got? What you got, Amber D over there? Like, oh, uh, look, she, wait, she done leaned back and caught to the side. She like, oh, oh, hold on. I just feel like okay, so I'm I'm a traditionalist. I I am, um, and I feel like it starts and it starts with the man. I feel like the man sets the tone. If you're not dealing with a provider and you're not dealing with a traditional man, that was established for you got pregnant, boo boo, right? No, and if you didn't know he wasn't traditional, more than likely you didn't take the time. To really thoroughly bet him and figure out, okay, he ain't, he talking it, but he ain't walking it type of deal. And so with a lot of these modern men who are not traditional, they're, they're modern men. This is more at at best, it's a partnership. And so I'm going to treat you like a partner. If you want to be a partner, then we're we're a teammate and we're partners. You're not the head, you're my teammate. And so taking into consideration that most relationships are not traditional. There's not traditional gender roles. I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not for treating a, a modern man. A modern man doesn't deserve the benefits of a traditional woman. Okay. If you're not, if you're not a traditional man, don't expect to be treated like a traditional man. Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely not. That's why I said maybe. <laughs> you said maybe sometimes. Nick, uh, go ahead and read the comment. So Samara uh, says, some of these accounts are jealous because the baby is always on the nipple where he used to be. Girl! Okay. Because <laughs> there's food in there. Then, uh, then they make it as an issue as if she's shirking her marital duties. 
let the baby finish and don't start a jealous argument before they're done and she'll be open to you having next mister <laughs> now i think that it's important to it, it, it's so important to go to counseling when you start the family go ahead nick nick go ahead and read this okay, one so jennifer Jackson oh wait wait let nick read this one okay. Okay, Jennifer Jackson at Facebook said we need to restore natural family order. We really do. We do. It's important. It's yeah. it's extremely important. And like you with uh Samara, Amber D, you with Samara, like, yeah, like get out of here, get off the nipple, you know. And I mean I I feel like the dynamic changes and I feel like unfortunately in American culture the breast, the human breast has become so sexualized. We've gotten so detached from its actual function, which is to feed babies, to feed human babies. You know, it has a practical function, but a lot of people, men and women, see it as just a sex organ, and, and it's not, you know, it's okay. not all sexual. Okay, now here's, I, I want to go back real, real fast. When What's Samara's comment is talking about the, um, the baby, what it, you know, it's not what it used to be with him on the nipple. But if he was sucking your nipples before the husband, and then now this baby is coming, now you are changing the program, because you have to, for the baby to be on there. So you're going to have that. And you're going to, and I feel like. What is that, nipple the, rivalry? It's, no, and I think that, no, I think that's crazy. Everybody that's crying that's, over the milk. Right, uh, not willing to, they're not acknowledging that you're going through a major life transition. Why would you even? Because it, it's a force now. Right, Why, as a man, that everything is supposed to stay the same. Like, no, you're going through a huge life transition becoming a parent. No, everything is not going to be the same. A dirt that's dirt. why I think, that's <laughs> why I think counseling, when you decide, to, when, you know, once you start a family, I think counseling for both is extremely important and really for the guy so that he can realize like, oh, wait a minute, things are going to change. Not me just looking at how it's changing for you physically, how it's going to change for you, sir, emotionally. Yeah. Because there's going to be some issues there and some lifestyle changes for both. But nobody pays attention to the guy. They just focused on her, oh, her feet swollen, this physical change that she's going through mm. versus the emotional change that he and the mental change that he's going to have to go through. We just we just move the guy out the way like, oh, yeah, that's the dad. So we don't even give them the credit that they Thanks. need, honestly. Yeah. So we come on. We got to be. But you know what? Honestly, nah. You're not giving the guy that. Come on nah, now. Because you know what? It's not our job. You know, I, I am a firm believer that men need to counsel men. Men need to create spaces for men. Fathers should create spaces where new fathers can come and speak and share and be supported. That is a man's issue. Men need to address the lack of support new fathers don't have. That's not up to women. All right, go That's ahead. Fatherhood and for men. Go ahead, Amber so D. Mike Marsh of Facebook said, if a man is getting jealous over a baby getting fed, then he definitely needs some help. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's something going on. Yeah, we're like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Like, bro, yeah. So, no, and I feel like when we were talking a couple episodes ago about black men killing each other, black men need to address that. I firmly believe that new fathers need so much more support than what they currently have. And it's a travesty. And it's shameful that men who know they need help feel like there's no resources available to them. And I feel like as a woman, if I imagine myself as a man, I'm going to get better advice and better support from another woman. So therefore as a man and a new father, I would get the best support from another other fathers. Man. Exactly. Yeah. So they need some groups too. Yeah, but man, I do that. Nobody is stopping them from forming groups. No one's stopping them from mentoring each other. Nobody's stopping these men from these groups. So if your husband says, well, if your husband wasn't your husband, you know what I mean? You kind of know them. But 
Can you imagine your dude going be like, oh yeah, I gotta go to a support group and it's not a, a dependency like an AA or a drug dependency group. You'll be like, yeah, okay. How many black women would actually be okay with your dude telling somebody, I'll be back, I gotta go to this group? Or or maybe he don't wanna tell you he's going to this support group because he don't wanna hurt your feelings. And you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna hang out with my boys. How many of us would actually be okay with that? That's a trust issue. And I feel like in that uh, it's a trust issue. And as far as not telling the truth, that's a transparency, transparency issue, which goes back to the root of your relationship. And I personally, if my husband told me, hey, I'm going to go to these meetings, these new father meetings, um, we talk about man stuff with only men. I'm like, oh, OK, like taking it because I, I feel like mental health is such a big deal. Like if I. If my man did that, I would be so impressed. I'd be so pleased. I'm like, oh my God, thank you, Lord, for giving a man that has a level of self-awareness. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, but I'm only speaking for myself. The majority of Black women, I feel like because a lot of the relationships I see are rooted in toxicity and dysfunction, like those core issues of trust and transparency, yeah, I don't think they would take it well because the foundation of the relationship is weak. Okay, um, go ahead, Nick. You want to read the comment? Yes, Jennifer Jackson from Facebook said, do we really need premarital counseling or do people need to um, really talk organically before we jump into bed? If you're building solid foundations with actual, with actually communicating with one another. Okay, so. something that to think about. Yeah, and so that that's what Amber D was pretty much talking about. So women will be supportive. I would say women like me because I would. there is because men, some men who are like kind of aware, talk about the suicide crisis among men in America um, and the mental health crisis going on with men right now. Um, so the men is like so there's some men who are like aware that there is really a problem, you know, happening in our country uh, uh, with men. You know, and if you're having, you know, and if you are willing to go and get help and assistance, that's a great thing. I don't even I know how someone would feel some way about that, negatively about that, um, knowing how badly it could turn out if he didn't get help um, and support, unless it was like the foundation of your relationship was very weak. And I, I have 100 and 10% agree. Look, I'm like, Mari, I'm 100% Mari Shore right there. <laughs> Until we get some dudes all here to be like, ah, man, that ain't it. Here's the thing. If you are in a relationship prior to it, if the foundation is strong, all is well. But if you have a jealous guy, ladies, don't, you know, you already know he's jealous and you see the, you know, these red flags. You got to expect a parade if you plan on reproducing. And so you have so many, I mean, there's a lot out there, a lot of uh, men out there who will, if the girl leaves or the female leaves, he'd be then killed her and their children. Oh, girl. Okay. Oh, because, go ahead. Let, okay. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it because these, these man of spirit, alpha men, red pill, uh, save yourselves, passport bros. What they don't want to talk about is, okay. Oh, women are the, we're soft. We're the weaker vessel. We're emotional. That no, these men are quite emotional. They're emotionally unstable and mentally traumatized. Okay, or vice versa. And yes, they're the black femicide rate in America is less than every five hours. So it's like every four point seven or four point eight hours, a black woman is getting taken off the earth in this country, usually by an intimate partner. Okay, and it and it's over stuff like that. She broke up with me. She ended the relationship. She got in a relationship, and so this man's response is to go and kill her, and sometimes kill the children too. That is insanity, and it's not just a one off. It is happening repetitiously in the black community. This is something that whether people want to acknowledge or not, it is normal. That is a normal consequence potential outcome for a black woman in this country that is insane and it's something that really needs to be addressed these men's mental health needs to be addressed like they're very mentally unstable especially when children are brought into the picture I, I, I'm with you 
It's major because I was shocked to see when I hear stories like that, I'd be shocked that they black. And I remember the first one, you know, when a guy um, was from here. No, he was originally from here, moved to, I want to say, Cleveland and didn't want the marriage to be over. Went and picked the children up from school. And this was some years ago. You guys can check that out. Picked them up from school, killed her, the children and himself. It, it, it was tragic. It was tragic. So how, how do how do we move forward? Should we have these groups? Should the men be listening and saying, hey, we need to have these groups? Should we implement it? Let's mm-hmm. let's have a solution. We got the issue. Let's have a solution. They yeah, but they have to implement it. You you can't make somebody want to do better. You can't make somebody get help when they don't want to receive help. So I feel like back to being traditional, the most powerful thing we can do as women, because this isn't our issue is to close your legs, close them. You say it's not only, and I feel like y'all remember the story where that black girl got killed by her male friend because she beat him at basketball. They, and they, they didn't even have a sexual relationship because she was a lesbian. So it's not even, you know, sexual, at, you know, to, at that point. But definitely you shouldn't be, or don't be having intercourse and you're not on birth control. Like, gatekeep your womb, but also understand that a lot of these men, even before children are involved, they start displaying these like mental instability and, you know, you kill it, stalk you, kill you, fight your new man. Okay. And y'all didn't even have kids together. You just had a sexual relationship. So I feel like the best thing women can do as far as addressing this problem is to close their legs because you don't want to be tied to them. <laughs> <laughs> what about... You, Nick, what you got? It's, it's, uh, it's kind of hard. Like, I, I kind of agree with her. You don't want these problems, then we have to choose a little bit wiser than what we do. But it, it's like, but it goes both ways, though. You yeah, like she talked about the men, you know, killing. But like there was just a young lady who was upset with her boyfriend and killed their two year old child. That's crazy. Because of you know they got into an argument, and they were breaking up, so she kills the baby. Down here is the same thing. This mother kills their uh, six, the six year old child. The, the parents were separated. The teenagers, I think, were staying with the father, but they can't. And they, she killed the child and killed herself. The teenagers found her and the, the little sister. That's like traumatizing. Right. All in behind. A relationship. All behind. It, it's not that serious. For it's some, not. For some people, it is. And I feel like it's a lot of people. It's not, I feel like it's not even fair to say some. And I feel like it's people not being strong in themselves or having a lot of emotional baggage and trauma getting into romantic relationships. And then people thinking, and I feel like women are prone to this, but it's men too, think that they can be healed through a romantic connection or it's that their partner's obligation or the purity of their relationship is going to heal their inner trauma instead of working on those issues themselves. Okay. Exactly. That's that's it in a nutshell. And that's presently where I'm at, trying to work on and heal from, you know, just, yeah. You got to be willing to work on yourself before you try to get serious with the next person. You know, some people don't want to be alone. Some people don't want to be alone. Right. And I feel like it's easier to say, if I could just, if I just had a man, if I just had a woman, I'd be happy. Instead of saying, I really have to figure out how to be happy by myself. Now watch this. Let's be real. Is that really it? Or is it, I wish I had a man or somebody to blame my issues on? Because when you're alone, 
when you're alone, guess what? It's maybe you are the problem. Oh. And it's like, oh, okay, as long as I have somebody, I can always point the finger and blame that person. And this is why I'm responding this way. Or you hear that saying, I'm thinking that's probably where that saying came from. Uh, don't poke the bear. No, the bear was already trying to fight. The bear just needed somebody to fight with. So when the bear is by themselves, who are you going to fight with? Now right. you got to go out and search to find somebody to attack. Come on, man. And you you got to work on yourself. Go ahead. And with the bear... The bear don't when the bear doesn't have anybody to fight, they have a fighting energy within them. So they're fighting themselves internally and it's energetic. And sometimes you meet people where you can tell they're wrestling in within themselves and they got that pop off trigger hair anger temperament. And it's like, ooh, I don't want to be around you. Because you you waiting for somebody to pop off on, but in the meantime, it's just all bubbling and churning up inside. Man, you just want me to say something so you can attack me. No, and that is not, that's with both male and females. It's the energy. And if you see it, like I said, you see one red flag, it's usually a parade to follow. Come on now. Look, you mess around, turn around the drum line behind you. Uh Uh-uh. Get out when you can. And if you are out, don't go back. I am a firm believer. If I have dated you, no, no returns. It's over. Yes. Oh, done and done. A one and done. I'm out here. I'm out here like Maurice Claret. <laughs> when he said a one and done, you remember he made that? I think that was on ESPN where it was like, boom, the one year, then bam, I'm going to go. But come on, one and done. You're an ex for a reason. There were flags that were there. So to go revisit an issue is stupid to me. That's just me. But like, oh, we could be cool, but never, ever, ever am I going back. That's just it. Look, I'm like, that's just it. Let me give. Uh... <laughs> oh, you know what? Let me say this real quick because I know we're running over. COVID. COVID in China. Listen, the U.S. ain't playing. Y'all ain't loud over. Bye. See ya. You got to have. the first time. Yeah, we, you got us one time, not the second time. And over there, COVID is so, it's running rampant that at the ERs, they're so full. They talking about something. BYOB. Bring your own bed. I can't. <laughs> Bring your own hospital bed. Child, y'all got a little fold up and roll away, go and fold in the car. Because if you got to go to the hospital, you're going to need to be laying on your bed. Yes, that's it's how packed rising, it is. It's rising in the United States, too, between the COVID, the flu, and RSV. It, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's we got bad. those issues, but we ain't fooling now. Now they ain't loud over here. Look, they got a negative COVID, then, okay, we'll see. Before, it was like people just coming in and out doing what they want to do. No, got us the first time. We shut it down. We can't afford to do it no more. But COVID is still out there and real, and please, you wear your mask. Weird, weird, weird. But here's what's interesting, and I ain't saying nothing. Form your own opinion. So um, the U.S. offered the vaccine over there in China. Why they say no? Silence. Yeah, over there. Silence. Not listen. Not 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 listen. Y'all use your own mind. So the U.S. offers to send some vaccines over there to help them, and the Chinese people. I'm gonna say alleged because I heard from an outlet said no. Thank you. Okay, because... Don't, you ain't got to say why. You ain't got to say why. Don't say it, because we got to cover me, okay? Because y'all know that flag me booming. I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. All right, today's footnote. Life is like a camera. Focus on what's important. Capture the good times. Develop from the negatives. And if things don't work out, take another shot. Author unknown, but I love that. So... Lovely people, I appreciate you guys. Come to the end of the show. I appreciate you guys tuning in today. I know time is something that you cannot get back, so I appreciate you guys spending time. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and if you'd like to donate, that information is below. Let's give it up for my people, my people, my people. Look, where my little sound effects at? I'll be cornball, but I love it. Let's give it up for Nick the Voice. Thank you for coming on, Nick the Voice. Hold on, I gotta make sure my music up. Hold on, there we go. Ah! We appreciate you. See you next week. And let's give it up to the analyst, Amber D. 
<laughs> All right, I gave you guys today's footnote. Please take heed. Um, if you feel as though that you are in crisis, you can text 988. 988 if you just need somebody to talk to. Um, we want you here. We need you here. So just say no to suicide. And just as the earlier hot topic we spoke about with uh, Prince Harry, it's so interesting how people want us to stay silent so that they're comfortable. But if you have an experience that you need to get out and you want to put it out for self-healing, feel free to do so. Don't worry about the other people. Don't worry about the other people. I am so tired of people having, and this is why we need the suicide crisis lifeline. Because everybody else, more people are more uncomfortable if you share your story and you are the victim. You should be able to express yourself the way that you see fit. All right. As long as you're not harming anybody else, people may be uncomfortable, but that's okay. How many years have you been uncomfortable? All right. So text 988 if you need to talk to someone. Find you, embrace you. Most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people, you know what it is. Shop Talk every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Peace.